You need a new phone, but first you have to consider how much can I spend? Do I wanna customize hardware or software? Or do I just wanna turn the phone on and go? Each answer represents an entire chain of events. For full control, you want a phone with a modular architecture, like an Android, with components that fit together in well understood ways. You choose a base frame, then add hardware and software at multiple price points with different features. Choice exists because any company can sell you parts as long as they meet Android specifications. But in a system with interdependent architecture, like the iPhone, the provider makes most of the decisions. Here, proprietary parts depend on one another. The same team of people developed every component for the overall system to work. So, by the time the phone is sold, your choices are limited to things like size, color, and storage. Neither architecture is better than the other, and both can be extremely successful. In fact, most organizations use both at different times in the life cycle of a product or service. But according to modularity theory developed by Clayton Christensen and used by innovators to design and equip their business models, which one you choose as you enter the market predicts how quickly adoption will occur. Let's look at some examples. In 1988, Toloram Industries was determined to increase access to affordable, quick to prepare food in Nigeria, a rapidly urbanizing country where most earn less than $2 a day. Starting from scratch, they plan to create an instant noodle market, Indomie noodles. But given Nigeria's unpredictable infrastructure, they quickly realized they couldn't just make the noodles. They needed to source energy critical to generate a predictable power supply, a transportation network to move the product, and to train staff across all production dimensions. In other words, they had to build an interdependent architecture in order to control costs and create the market. Big initial investments and a slow market adoption, but ultimately, big wins for Tolerome. Today, Tolerome sells billions of packs of noodles annually, employs thousands of people, and has almost transformed instant noodles into a staple food in Nigeria. It can also easily add products to its suite of offerings, like milk, snacks, oils, cereal, and other consumer goods. Tolerome started with an interdependent architecture and, over time, has integrated modular offerings. Meanwhile, started in 1975, Microsoft uses a modular architecture to evolve with the market and ensure growth. Microsoft supplies the operating system, but lets multiple providers like Dell, HP, and Lenovo provide the physical devices that run Windows. More options, more design styles, all at multiple price points. What's more, Microsoft has been able to move up market to machines with high-end graphics cards for gaming. How? They never outsource their performance-defining component or the software that customers rely on to run their business. Instead, they set and verify specific standards suppliers must meet in order to achieve their desired outcome, regardless of the device it runs on. There's a lot more to modularity theory, which is built on a number of components and conditions. To know which architecture to use and when, go to christiansoninstitute.org theory modularity.